Well, hey there, guys. It's your favorite backyard geographer. I was out in the garage, going through my junk, and then thought of you. You know, one of the most magical parts of visiting Disney parks is the immersion of themes and how the architecture and costuming makes you feel as though you're walking along the Nile River or entering the untainted Wild West. I mean, then again, nothing makes you feel like you've entered the Wild West, like an old-fashioned shooting gallery. I mean, grabbing an infrared rifle and aiming at those little red dots and showing off to your friends what a marksman you are. But did you know that Disneyland had other shooting galleries in its past? Join me today as I share my original Disneyland shooting gallery target. So here's a brief history of the shooting galleries at Disneyland. Now, the Main Street Shooting Gallery operated from July of 1955 to January of 1962. It was located where the Gibson Girl Kitchen is today, in the back of the Penny Arcade. The gallery originally had eight rifles that shot small lead pellets. The attraction would actually provide guests with a classic Winchester model rifle, and it turned out to be a big hit. Okay. The demand was so huge, another shooting gallery would open in July of 1956, this time in Frontierland. This gallery would feature 16 rifles and was significantly larger than the one that was on Main Street. The next month, the third shooting gallery would open, and this one in Adventureland, with 12 rifles alone. The theme for this gallery was unique. It was Big Game Safari, featuring in-depth theming of wild game animals and some familiar views from around the park itself in Adventureland. The location is right next to the bazaar, just kitty corner from the entrance of the Jungle Cruise. The Big Game Shooting Gallery operated until January of 1982. Now, did you know that there was even, just for a couple years, a fourth shooting gallery at Disneyland? Do you know where it was? Well, I'll tell you in a little bit. Now, in the beginning, Disneyland shooting galleries featured traditional chain-driven targets that moved back and forth in front of a theme backdrop. The rifles fired lead pellets, and cast members would reload the rifles between rounds. Every night after park closing, the entire target area was repainted, requiring several gallons of paint and eight hours of labor every night. It goes without saying that Walt Disney really wanted his park to look brand new at the opening of every day. Now, the McGlasson guns supplied Disneyland with their rifles from the park's opening, and in the 1970s, they began experimenting with a new arcade rifle that shot infrared beams versus the actual bullets themselves. When a marksman hit a target with one of these new devices, the technology would begin an action or a reaction such as music, lights, or even motion. The advantages of this new system were obvious. I mean, first, the targets were much more interesting to hit and to watch, and it would require less cast members to man the attraction. There was even the matter of maintenance. I mean, the arcade would not need to be repainted nightly, and their safety. Did you know that lead pellets had a tendency to bounce off those targets and hit oncoming guests? Oops. So let me first speak to my little device here that I wanted to share with you. Now this is an original Disneyland prop, essentially, right? This was done at the shooting gallery. As we can see, this is from uh, the big game in Adventureland. It's a rhino. As you can see, it's been cut metal. It's steel. It's a little rusty with age. But what's interesting about this is that these needed to be cleaned. They were completely cleaned off every year. They were chipped away back down to the metal. And then total, there were 11 colors that were needed to maintain all the targets at this location. So I guess this is really a neat piece of that Disney history, that culture. So as you can see, it's got a spot down here where the bolt would have been in, and then this, you know, the rhino would have moved across, you know, the area, and then you would have shot it with your bullet. It would have made that classic ping noise when you hit the target. Now, by the time the electronic age came to firearms, the Adventureland Gallery had already become, well, turned into a store, leaving only the Frontierland Shooting Gallery itself. This pellet-driven Western Arcade bit the dust in 1984 for a major refurbishment, when it reopened the following year as the Frontierland Shooting Arcade, and it would now feature the new fandangled <laughs> infrared rifles and 97 targets. Now, as mentioned before, there was a fourth, very short-lived shooting gallery. 
It was the Davy Crockett Arcade in Frontierland. Uh, it was the fourth and the last to join the Disneyland Shooting Arcade roster and was geared towards the younger guests at the park. Now, I just wanted to wrap up with one fun fact. Now, Walt Disney World, all the parks technically have a shooting gallery in Frontierland, but Walt Disney World in particular, that was also an opening day attraction for them. Their Frontier Shooting Gallery, which was, again, an opening day attraction, requires over 2,000 gallons of paint per year to repair that attraction when it was still one of the old-fashioned metal shoot 'em up type shooting galleries. Well, maybe you remember the shooting galleries at the park. Maybe you remember the big game one that was at Adventureland. Be sure to like this video, comment below, and we'll talk soon. There was the matter of maintenance. The Oh, I totally was messing up there. Sorry. Okay, let me get